Hello, and welcome to Our Devotions, where together we're developing lives with God at the center. I'm Pastor Daniel. This is my amazing wife, Pastor Amanda. Hello. Today we're going to be talking about, but everyone's doing it, <laughs> starting off in the book of 2 Kings. So grab your Bible and get ready to jump right in with us. with children have heard excuses. Yeah, that one especially, right? <laughs> and they love to blame somebody else. And as much as I like to pick on our kids, I think I've been guilty of it. Yeah, I think everybody has. It, it's so easy to get in this, well, but they're doing, you know, hey, you shouldn't have, but you did. And just to sh shift yeah. and try to put the responsibility of our choices onto somebody else. It is so common. But in 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 2, uh, do you actually want to read that one for us? It says, he did evil in the sight of the Lord and followed the idolatrous sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel sin. He did not turn from them. So in, as God's giving an account, he goes, he, and places responsibility on, on him, and then he goes, he did evil and followed the sins of. Yeah. But he doesn't give him a, a pass because he wasn't the one who creatively came up with it. Right. He sits here and he goes, but you didn't depart from it. And yeah. there's this personal responsibility that stayed with him even when um, he was following the crowd, following the practice that the nation had been, been doing. Right. And... And there's this huge thing because so much in our culture today is this tendency to look around us to decide which things of God's word apply to us today. Yeah. And there's this tendency to go, well, but they're not, but this guy did. And yeah. so we, we try to use that. And I, I've had a conversation with somebody who didn't like the fact that the Bible called something that they like a sin. Yeah. And they're like, you know, but, but. It's the 21st century. Yeah, the Bible doesn't change. Yeah. And I, told us that God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I said, well, if, the, if, you're, if you're following the culture and the century and the time, then you're not following God and his yeah. word. And it, it's so easy to get caught up in this justification by those that are around us. Do you have Revelation 2.20? It says, but I have this against you, that you tolerate that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, and is teaching and seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols. This was such a huge thing where she was uh, encouraging them to fit in, encouraging them to adopt the practices of the people around them. Yeah. And Jesus calls them out going, hey, you're tolerating this. You're letting this go, and that's not okay. And I think there are so many in the church today that are in this boat that have gone, oh, yeah, just blend in, but they're doing it, so it yeah. must be okay. And he goes, don't let that slide. Don't yes. let that into your life. That will destroy it. And God gives this loving call back, this warning that, that's quite severe. Right. And... But I'm like, that's such an easy tendency yeah. to get caught up into. In Romans chapter 1, he, he addresses a whole bunch of this. And he, he says that they became foolish in their thinking and their hearts were darkened. That's Romans uh, 1 verse 21. And he, he goes on and says that God gave them up to dishonorable passions and it goes through on these things that they begin to do because they started following their own desires and they started following what was acceptable to those around them. And it, it lists them. And in verse 28 to 32, it goes through and it's talking about unrighteousness, evil, covetous, malice, uh, murder, strife, gossip, slander, haters, insolent, haughty, boastful. And he went through and he just mentioned homosexuality and Faithless, heartless, ruthless, and all of these different sins. And then he says, though they know God's righteous decrees, that those who practice such things deserve to die, not only do they do them, but they give approval to those who practice them. Yeah. 
And he calls out this approving what everyone's doing just because everyone's doing it. Right. And he goes, that's not okay. They're, they're approving of them, but that doesn't make them okay. And he declares it to be, to be wrong. And as I was looking at this, there is uh, a term, sorry, uh, term in psychology um, called pluralistic ignorance. Uh, and it's this spot where when we look at the people around us and we try to take a cue from them, even when um, it doesn't feel right, and it can be like, hey, there's an emergency, but if everyone else is calm, you're like, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's not an emergency. Yeah. Like they, they ran a test and they put a volunteer in a room who, who didn't know what was going to happen. They, he was in for a test, but uh, he thought he was waiting for the test to start when smoke started to pour underneath the door. Yep. And if there was one person, almost all of them would leave the room and go report the smoke. But would they put in uh, two people who were told, don't do anything, don't respond. Yep. And then the other person who was just waiting for the test to appear, uh, he's waiting for his turn to go take a test. And when the smoke comes underneath and he gets starts to get worried, but when everybody else is fine, <laughs> He's like, no, oh, it must be, must be okay. He just sits down. And it went from being like 85% that responded to being like 10% that responded. And it's this shocking thing where when they looked at the world around them yeah. and they let that guide them, they could be fooled into walking into a devastating tragedy. Yeah. And that's the condition for so many people where they go, but it looks like it's wrong, but they're all okay with it. So maybe it's okay. Yeah, we need to let the Bible be our standard. You know, even throughout the Old Testament, you know, we just read about the evil king, but there are times when a king turns to the Lord. And what that looks like is he calls people and he says, okay, where is there a prophet? Okay, where are the scriptures? Bring them to me. What are the laws of the Lord? Because sometimes they don't even remember them anymore. Yeah. They just know that there were at some point. But they call them forth and they start reading the decrees. They start reading the laws. They start finding a prophet that still is honoring God. And then they turn from all of their evil ways and they start obeying what yeah. God has said. And that's what we need to do. We need to not look to a denomination, not look to a church, not look to any man to determine what we should believe or how we believe it. But we need to keep the Bible first and foremost in front of us to say, no matter what anybody else does, no matter what anybody else says, I'm going to follow what God has already said. Yeah. I love it. In Romans 12 too. He says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. Yeah. And we renew our mind with his word. Yes. And when we make this a part of our daily life, then it becomes our standard. It becomes our guide. Yeah. And we can live a fruitful life. But if we look to culture and, well, they're all doing it, then we end up in the mess that we would try to save our own children from. Right. Well, want to get into our confessions. All right, repeat these out loud with me. I am loved by God. I am loved by God. The same power. The same power. That raised Christ from the dead. That raised Christ from the dead. Lives in me. Lives in me. I am more than a conqueror through him. I am more than a conqueror through him. I'm the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. I am redeemed and forgiven. I am redeemed and forgiven. In Christ. In Christ. Every spiritual blessing is mine in Christ. Every spiritual blessing is mine in Christ. All of God's promises are for me in Christ Jesus. All of God's promises are for me in Christ Jesus. I am created in Christ. I am created in Christ. For good works. For good works. I am strong and courageous. I am strong and courageous. Fear has no place here. Fear has no place for here. God is with me. For God is with me. I am filled with the grace and power of God. I am filled with the grace and power of God. God, I thank you for each person who's joining us, God, that they would look to you, that your word would guide them, that they would not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but they would be transformed by renewing your mind, that your word would go deep, that your word would produce fruit, that they wouldn't see other people's actions as justification, but they would look to you, look to honor and please you in all that they do, and that it would bring fruit both now and for eternity. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We hope that this blessed and encouraged you. If it did, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, we want to invite you to get into God's Word for yourself to discover who He is and what He has for you. Be blessed. We'll see you again soon.